A few months ago, I was hacking with this legend right here, and we were looking at a file upload that allowed us to execute arbitrary commands on this target server of ours. And it was kind of a really cool one because even though we know we had RCE, we couldn't figure out why we couldn't get any data to get exfiltrated. So if you're not familiar with RCE, don't worry, this video is for you, and I'm gonna show you how to look for them how to exploit them and why do they work? How do they work in the back end and what does it look like? But before we do that, let me give you a heads up that this is a free module taken out of my course. So if you haven't seen my bug bounty course, this is a part of it, but we have made it available for free. All you have to do is just go into the link down below in the description, click it, and it is free for you to use it. And if you wanna buy the course, I will also pin it in the comments down below with a 50% off code. That's gonna have all these different modules like RCE, SSRF, XXC, IDOR, you name it, we have it covered. All right, now let's talk about the vulnerability that Andre and I found. And it's pretty cool because this is one, a public program. A lot of hackers have looked at it. And also this functionality was kind of baked into the documentation. And if you would have read the documentation, you could have easily spotted, but the problem we were having with it was that we didn't know how to exfiltrate data because no matter what command we gave it, we couldn't get the results of it because it wasn't a verbose RCE. And also we didn't have anything to kind of like send over data over HTTP or DNS. If those two don't make sense, don't worry, I'll explain in just a bit. But we just had a lot of different things that we had to uh, kind of overcome and figure out. So with that said, I kind of wanted to give you the gist of the vulnerability before we do the example. And if you want to follow along again, this vulnerability that we have the lab for it is 100% for free. All you have to do is go to hackingup.io and look for interactive RCE, go to view hub, launch it, and then go click open. And it will bring you to this vulnerable instance of this application, which is only one functionality. And that is just checking stocks. So if I actually open up network tab and send this request, we can see that it makes a request right here and it is sending this request. And all we get back is a number of different stock levels. So this is 137 items available, but no matter what we do here, if this is actually vulnerable to an RCE, we can't see the outputs of it, right? And this is kind of similar to what we had. We knew there's a functionality available on this program or whatever it was that we were sending it. And we knew we can execute a operating system command using that function, but nothing was coming back. And the other option with this is to do something like a curl maybe, and then hitting your own private server, maybe it could be your interact.sh. And then if that is working and you can get an interact.sh link on the back end of your instance. If we go back to our interact it says there should be some sort of a log that says, hey, there is a curl request that came from a remote server, which we can see the IP for that server. And we know that was a curl that we sent. So we know that this is working. And if you have curl available, it's super easy. All you have to do is do an X post, and then maybe you can do the data for it as an ID. And what it, this will do is it will send a post request to that server, and it would attach the value of ID within the post parameter. So if I show you one more time right here, what we're doing here, we're sending a curl request. This is a request that we're sending. We're saying, hey, end your last command, curl, and I want you to send a post. I'm gonna actually rewrite this. It's gonna be an X post, which is a curl argument that says, hey, I want you to make the method post. And then dash D is the data you wanna send over to that post. And by doing these tag ID, it is going to run this Linux command, which is an inline command. And the result of that would be assigned to post right here and be sent over to our server. So that's just one way of doing that. If you're not familiar with inline RCEs, don't worry, there is a module in the course. You should also look at it online and look into it. But, but executing an inline command allows you just to have different commands combined together. So if I go to my terminal, for example, and I say, I want you to do a curl to a uname, for example, it's gonna come back and say, this is my uname. It's gonna pass the value of this command into the secondary command that we have. So this is kind of what we're doing here to get RCE, but this means that we know there is curl available. The next option here is that we can actually do the same thing, but instead of passing it as a post data right here with curl, we're going to attach the result of our command into the DNS itself, so the DNS entry right here. And we're gonna do that using NS lookup just in case we don't have an outbound uh, HTTP traffic. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the same command right now. I'm gonna go into here, we're gonna do NS lookup, I'm actually going to delete everything else and we're going to do a who am I because we want to make sure there is no special characters uh, within the command so it gets passed to uh, the DNS server right here. So we're going to try this one more time. I'll show you what this means. I'm going to run this command. Hopefully this works and it's going to come back right here eventually and give us the results of the command right here, www data as a subdomain of this. That is what we're doing here is we're assigning the results 
of our command as a subdomain of this entire DNS request. So that means you have to have a way to kind of monitor the DNS request, which with Orestify or Interact SH you're allowed to do that. But that just makes it really, really fun. But you have to kind of be careful of how do you do these things because if you have, for example, a command like you name here, if you do it, if there are special characters or spaces and things like that, that may not work. So if I do this again and type in maybe you name, we'll see what it does. It's like it comes back with the first word of it. You kind of have to be careful. And there's other ways you can do this, like base 64 in your data and sending it over. But it just makes you limited when there are spaces and special characters that could not be assigned as a DNS entry. So that was a really quick introduction to RC. I know I'm flying through all this because I want to just keep this video short. And if you want to look at the back end of the server, you can go to RC helper right here and kind of shows you what's happening in the back end. It's pretty much running this command. And anytime we add something like ls, it's going to just close the previous command and run ls but we're not seeing the results of this because it is a blind RC and we kind of have to use the tricks that I showed you to exfiltrate data. But now there is only one more thing to look at and that is what if there is no DNS? What if there is no outgoing HTTP? And how do we exploit that? Well, if we go to our firewall right here, I have set the firewall to no outbound allowed. So that means no DNS and no curl is allowed at all throughout this. And we can check that out by opening up our interactive SH and now I'm sending the same request here with curl and saying, hey, I want you to do a curl to this URL. And you can see nothing has came in. Six minutes ago is the last one that came in. And if I do the same thing with NS lookup, I'll go right here and we do NS lookup to our domain. This request is going to hang because the firewall isn't allowing that request to be completed because we have completely shut it off and we have no access. But the question still remains the same. How do we exfiltrate data when we have no outbound using HTTP or a DNS server? But well, you have one more thing you can try and that is usually doing the sleep command. So if I go back into here, instead of doing an NS lookup, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say sleep for 15 seconds and that is going to tell the operating system to wait 15 seconds before it does anything. That includes also responding to us in this case with this server that we can see. It's gonna do the 15 seconds and eventually once the 15 seconds is up, it's going to come back and give us the results of it. But we know, again, we can't see the results of this. So how do we exfiltrate data? And let me show you how you can use sleep to get that data to come out and send back to you without looking at anything at all. Maybe just using something like Burp Suite or Kaido. But before we do this, we got to kind of understand how an if statement works in a bash environment and kind of how you can abuse it or use it to actually extract data so let's take a look at a command right here i'm going to use who am i and it's going to just print naham sake but how do i extract this one by one and then use sleep to know what the first letter second letter or third and so on is so what we're going to do here is we're going to do an who am i again but this time we're going to use a pipe and pass the results from this command into cut and use dash c for column and then say one and it's going to print the first letter right here so what it's doing right now is it's going to just print every time we increase this number one by one is going to kind of print out the next letter and until we get to the end and it's going to be over but now we need to kind of think about how do i use this with sleep using an if statement well you can run an if statement like this by evaluating the result from or who am i using the first column and seeing if it matches for example a and then if it is true it's going to sleep for 10 seconds and if it's not it's not going to do anything at all so if i run this right now because it doesn't start with an a we know that that's not true it's supposed to be an n it's not going to do anything and within pretty much one second it came back but now if i try n which we know is the first letter of my username it is going to take a while up to 10 seconds right here and then it's going to stop and telling us that hey that statement was true and you can see right here it took about a good 10 seconds to get us to where we wanted and uh, we can do this for every letter pretty much you can say hey what is the first one and what is the second one now you can see again it is sleeping because i know the second letter is an a so it's going to just take a few more seconds and come back to us once we have uh, reached our 10 seconds so now let's talk about how do we do this automatically using a burp suite or kaido what i've done with kaido right here is i've loaded up with a sample list of a through z assuming that everything is going to be with a, the lowercase letters and i've also given it one two three four and a dash and if you want to look at what this looks like when it's decoded from the html without the spaces this is pretty much what it's doing it's saying hey i want you to do the same thing do a who am i cut for the first column right here is what we have assigned our list right here so list right here is going to get looped through where the zero is so the same thing as here and then it's going to sleep five seconds once that statement is true and if i do this first one it's going to give us 
a uh, little bit of time, but if we sort it based on the time right here, let's see. Right here, we can see once it it's done, W is the one that's taken uh, five seconds right here. So now we know the first one is a W. So I'm going to go back here, type in W, close this out, and then go here and make this now the second spot in our list. So what I'm going to do here is right here, we're going to connect cut. And instead of doing one, we're going to do two. So dash. So right here is the next one. We're going to run the same thing. It's going to do something. And I'm assuming it's going to be a W again because of WW data. Let's see. It's going to take a few seconds. Looks like the second one is W. So we're going to stop this again. I'm going to do this very quickly. You can also do this in parallel if you wanted to, but I'm just going to show you a couple more of them. I know it's WW data, so it's going to be WW like this. Dash. So we know the first four, but now let's try another one. So we know the first four. I'm going to look for what is the fifth one. So I'm going to do run. It's going to do it again. And we can store it again. And it looks like the letter D came back. So we can go out right here and type it in and then do it again until we get to our last one, which we'll do number eight maybe and see what it does, which we may even not have an eight because this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, there's an eight right here. So let's see the letter A is the one that took the longest. And if we do nine now, I think it's going to just not give us anything and kind of tells us, like, hey, that was done. You can do this in a lot of different ways. You can just exfiltrate enough data to make a POC for your vulnerability report. But this is a really fun one that I thought I could create a video for you guys to kind of talk about the different ways you can extract data when you have an RC and what you can do if you don't have any way to just interact with a web server and using sleep with an if statement to extract this sort of a data. So those were the three methods that I can think of when it comes down to exploiting a blind RCE. But you let me know down in the comments, are there any other methods that I could have done or I may have missed throughout this video? Also, let me know what you thought of this video itself. Do you want more content like this? Maybe drop me a comment saying RCE and I can think of other ways that I can maybe showcase some of my findings. With that said, I want to quickly give a shout out to Andre, aka OXACB, and say thank you for being my collaborative partner on this and allowing me to make this POC and just give a shout out to you guys for watching this entire video. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, do all the liking, all the commenting, and becoming a homie and support this channel. And I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.